people in here, they've been inside from the start. They haven't had to survive. And they just don't get it. They can't. The very thing that makes you different is what makes you special. Hmm, now I'm all warm and fuzzy inside. To fight for this city. To be the symbol of hope that the arrow never was. I am the green arrow. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Charles is playing with some nice big action figures this week. No Funko toys for him this week. Nope. Uh, grow depth. <laughs> That's right. And I was showing him my Wonder Woman cover, 221, and the spec cover for it drawn by J.G. Jones, which he also signed and gave to me. That's for volume Karen. volume two, number two twenty one. That's right. Yes. Karen, keep on rocking. Keep That's on right. rocking me, baby. That is right. And this is signed by Greg Rucka as well. Oh, very cool. So anyway. Yeah, I, I know. I have his I have Rucka's signature on his Queen and Country uh first novel. Awesome. A gentleman's game. Yeah, I did uh JG's website for a couple of years, so mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. That. This was one of the payment things he gave me. What's that's, this? That's, that's a very NASA. That's he drew that for the uh, publisher to say this is what I'm going to draw for the cover of this. So, so by the way, she's Karen. Mm -hmm. I'm Charles. Oh, hi everyone! Welcome <laughs> back to episode 42 of the Fandom Zone. This is where we tell everyone what we have been showing each other while the theme is playing. Yep. He showed me Captain Cold holding a gun, and who was the other one? The Mirror Master. Oh, the Mirror Master holding a gun. Very nice. You like the Mirror Master, don't you? Yes, I do, very much. Yeah. I like him. Classic. But it's cowl on, yeah. It's, it's classic Mirror Master and Captain Cold. I like Cole. it. I like it. So, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, Um, you could hear Charles asking me to move the yeah, sorry about that. thing around so that you could see the signatures i'm quite proud of this by the way and i'm wearing my wonder woman shirt which says some princesses don't need to be saved and he's wearing his monty python shirt nobody expects the, the spanish. spanish inquisition that's right yeah Very so nice. there will be a reference to monty python in today's podcast as well knowing so. us there will be more than one python reference <laughs> yes but i know there's one so, so um what are today, we going to talk about today? Today, in episode 42, we will be talking about iZombie, season 2, episode 10, Method Head, instead of Meth Head, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, and Jessica Jones, 11, 12, and 13. I've got the blues, take a bloody number, and smile, all with AKA in front yeah. of them. <laughs> because, you know, AKA <laughs> alias, get it? Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Poke, poke. I see what you did there. Yeah. And of course, being episode 42, this is the episode that is the ultimate answer to the ultimate the question of life, the universe. The meaning of life. That's right. That's right. Exactly. This is my favorite number. I use this number very in various places around because it is my favorite number of all times. All times? 42. Yes, that is mm -hmm. correct. Uh, whenever I need numbers for something, I use four, two, two, four oh, in combinations cool. because I just love it. Or seven and six. Since oh, that so now I know how to hack into your password. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I do not use 42. Karen 42. I no, that's that. not it. <laughs> so, uh, shall we talk about iZombie first? Yeah, let's talk about iZombie. We haven't had it for a couple weeks. and That's uh, right. Or more than a couple weeks, really. Yeah, for a bit. A bit, yeah, a bit, a bit. So, Method Head. See, Python reference right there. That's right. 
So here's my uh, story titles, A, B, C. Since I'm hosting, I'm going to be doing the A, B, C thing. A, B, C. It's easy as one, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> uh, okay. Do, Ray, me. A, B, C. <laughs> one, two, two three, three, baby, you and me, girl. That's right. Yep. Sorry, I had to change uh, yep. uh, octaves. It was too high. All right, so uh, A story, giving him his props. Get it? Props. Props, yeah. Got it. B story, band aid. Mm -hmm. And C story, time keeps on ticking back into the zombie. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the past with the zombies. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, what did you give this episode? Are we doing? We don't we're doing, do that. We're going to do ratings right off the bat. No, oh, sorry, Karen. Wrong podcast. Oh, <laughs> I see how it is. Sorry. Okay, so giving him his props. Yeah. Um. This. Okay. First. I want to say, before we get into the main episode, I'm assuming this was supposed to be the Christmas episode. I would say so, and they pushed it back for some reason. Right. It seems like a big waste to me because you had the Christmas thing, you know, you had time to air this during the Christmas. Right. But presumably you do want the rate, you wanted better ratings. Right. So they pushed it off to January. Right. Now, mind you, there wasn't very much to the Christmas thing. For some reason, it was just a little thing at the top. Yeah, it's like a 10 minutes, and then they got into a diff totally different A plot, completely different thing, and different, it never different, tied back. Different brain and all that. Right. Never tied back to the Christmas thing at all. Yeah, we had a um, Santa brain for like 10 minutes, and then we go into the actor right. brain. Now, the, Santa, the only thing that was really important about the Santa brain was that... Clive and Liv had their little talk that reminded us that they still weren't working together again. Mm -hmm. So that was l literally the only thing about that storyline that did anything for but th us. But thankfully they have addressed that. Correct. Liv, but I mean, that Liv, was... Liv won Clive's confidence back. Right. But that was, don't you think that was the only point that they made during that? Well, yeah, it, it, well, it was an important thread you had to address. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. But I mean, I think that was really. It was. It felt to me like something like they were in the writer's room. They came up with this cliffhanger, mm -hmm. and then it was like, "Oh crap, we have to do address it so we can get back to square one." Right. So let's throw this Christmas thing in there. Yes. To say that it's a Christmas episode and also address that cliffhanger. Right. That's the so vibe that's... I got. Okay. Uh, and then the fact that it wasn't shown at Christmas time kind of made me go, hmm? "What?" But yeah, okay. Uh, when you watch it in reruns, you're not going to notice. So big. yeah, I mean, because yeah, sometimes you watch a Christmas episodes and it's not Christmas, right? Go so it. not a big deal. No big deal. So we're just looking at it like, hey, this already happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after all that, giving him his props, uh, it's Zombie High School, her favorite show, which of course she got for Christmas a box set. What a coinky dink. It just so happens that we were alerted to the fact that she's a fan of the show. Well, was it, she's mentioned it before, though. Yeah, I know she's, she has. So it's not like they came out of nowhere with this I show. I know. But they're reminding us she's a huge fan right at the same For time. For anybody new to the show that might not get it, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's why they do that. So she wants to work on the case, but she shows up to pick up the body. Clive is there on scene mm -hmm. and uh he doesn't want to work with her and she's about to walk off she turns and she gives him little hints that she wants to work on it and he finally he says so okay so you know about the show mm -hmm. yes well i guess you could be helpful then grudgingly <laughs> lets her work on the show okay so they they realized this guy was a method actor mm -hmm. uh, the, the other guy, the guy that actually shot him, because of the prop gun, and mm -hmm. this is such a trope. Uh, right. I've seen this on so many shows, that the prop gun was exchanged for a real gun, and the prop gun really looks and feels just like the real gun. Well, I think part of that was because of what happened to Brandon Lee in, right. the, in the Crow. 
mm-hmm. where we had an instance where he was supposed to get shot with a blank gun and somehow, hmm, I wonder how it got swapped out with a real gun and he died. Right. Right. And John Eric Hexum too from Voyager. Oh, Do you I, was, him? I, I wasn't aware of that one. No. Yeah. Uh, same thing. And around the same time as well. Mm-hmm. Um, exact same thing. He had a gun and it, uh, it went off and shot him in the head. Um, what a waste too. Yeah. I mean, those are terrible accidents. Um, especially in Brandon Lee's case, cause he had his whole future ahead of him. Yeah. That was the, the crow was his breakout role, mm-hmm. but unfortunately it was his last role because I know. he was killed during the production. So who knows what kind of career he could have had. I know would have been amazing. I think. Yep. Um, and even though, you know, John Eric Hexum, people don't know about him as much. He was a little bit older, but I really think he would have been good um, on genre shows. Um, he would have been kind of like, what is that actor from um, Hercules? Kevin Sorbo? Yeah, he would have been a Kevin Sorbo type. Okay. Um, playing on that sort of show i think okay. anyway um yeah so he gets shot but he gets really shot with a real bullet yeah not you know by accident with a fake bullet um and they they talk to people on the show uh writers all this other stuff of course lots of people hated him mm-hmm. because he was a diva he was method um he had made a, some sex tapes with his co-star um and it wasn't the sex tape she was afraid of getting out. It was making fun of her deaf coworker. That was horrible. It was kind that of, it, not horrible. It was, but it was kind of it was kind of great to see the deaf coworker ranting in sign language. It was. It was great. He's just like I'm going off in this guy. He's I know signing all over the place, which is I know hilarious. And you know what I really liked? I I had a deaf friend in junior high, and so I learned sign language. They they gave a sign language class to us. Um, because we wanted to um, communicate with her. And we also kind of took over when we went on field trips and the, the signing coach couldn't go with her. So we would sign to her on field trips and stuff. But anyway, I saw a lot of her in that character because when the uh, sign interpreter mm-hmm. stopped signing and started talking directly to Liv... And giving her opinion instead. And he was like, he banged on the table to say, I still want to (laughs) talk. That's what my friend would do. Nice. All the time. Mon, she would do that. She would like bang on the table. No, listen to me. Uh, So I have to wonder if that was actually a deaf actor playing a deaf character. Yeah, I don't know. I should have looked it up. Because they just recently had a deaf actress on Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. And um, she she played, obviously, a deaf character. but Right. But uh, but it was at least it was authentic because the actress was deaf. Right. So that's that's a huge deaf move, though, <laughs> that when the interpreter starts talking for themselves and yeah. the, the deaf person is like, no, you're here for me. <laughs> I, would, I would think that would be a huge. It's faux, very faux pas. Yeah. Well, no, because they're there just as much as the deaf person. So sometimes they do want to share their opinion right. of whatever's going on. But. Uh, but yeah, they are there for the deaf person. Uh, so yeah, uh, it, but it, I was just like, oh man, that takes me back. That is such a thing. Um, but yeah, I liked him very much. And, uh, the coworkers were, the other coworkers, not so likable. Right. Uh, his main coworker, not the girl, the guy. Okay. Didn't like him. Nope. Uh, he was a little too full of himself. And, of course, he was meant to be the red herring, I'm assuming. Yes. Uh, he and Liv did a scene together, and she slapped him. <laughs> and he was not expecting it. Now, was that Kerr Smith from Dawson's Creek? I don't know. Was I never that... watched Dawson's oh, Creek. Oh, you didn't watch Dawson's Creek? No. Everybody did in the 90s. Come on. Oh, I did not. Okay gross all right so i don't know if it was Kerr smith but if it was okay all right it might it have been like, it looked like him i have never seen a single episode i hear the guy from fringe was on it joshua whatever was jackson he on? 
Josh yeah. Jackson? Yeah. Was oh, he on? yeah, yeah. He played one of the main four characters. He played Pacey on Dawson's Creek. Yeah. Okay. He was he was like the best friend who ends up hooking up with Dawson's girl. And so, yeah. And the guy from Lost, was he on it? No, that no. was the other one. No, actually, uh, um, John Wesley Shipp, who played The Flash and now plays Barry <laughs> Allen's dad, played Dawson's dad on Dawson's Creek. Oh, okay. And then he got killed off on the show, but... <gasps> Spoilers. Spoilers? What if I go back to watch it? Not. You, you won't. No, I won't. Anybody? Nobody's going to go back and watch it. It just Dawson's wasn't Creek. my thing. Yeah. Sorry. It, it had its time. It's over. Now we moved on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I could see that, though. He, he looks like a Dawson's Creek person. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so I like that she, ha- she has the brain of the method actor. And I'm assuming that's what the slap was about. Right. She was methoding. She, well, yeah, she made a comment that I just felt that, or like, I felt it that felt, needed to happen or something. Or, like that. Yeah. yeah. It felt right. Or authentic or yeah, whatever. It felt right for the scene. Yeah. Right. And then they clapped afterwards, you know, like it was a good scene and everything. Um, and it made me kind of think, well, he didn't like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe there's a little bit of that coming through. That- mm-hmm. Maybe. She felt some animosity towards him. And uh, in the end, after all the questioning and the affairs and all this other stuff happening, it was the prop guy. After all. That it happened to, right? I mean. It came, yeah. <laughs> it came back full circle to the prop right. guy. After so, started, they started off the investigation with the prop guy. First guy, right. first guy they talked to. Right. And it's to give us the exposition of like, oh, yeah, well, there's all these kinds of guns and blah, 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 right. blah. Hey, feel this one. It feels just like your regular. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And he he always is like, yeah, he always leaves his gun sitting all around. And that, duh, OK, you know, he leaves his gun sitting around. So, of course, you're setting that up. Right. And that's apparently what was happening is he was planting the seed that this guy leaves his gun sitting around and, and there's all this intrigue on the set and blah, blah, blah. So that was that story. And Liv helped so much that Clive is again, ready to welcome her back at the end of the case. Right. He says, see you tomorrow. And she walks out and, you know, all smiley oh. and happy. And yeah, everybody's pup. It's puppy dogs and sunshine and rainbows. Right. Yes. And, what I liked is when they actually had the prop master in the interrogation room, um, Clive is interrogating her and she comes in and says, it was just a crime of passion, wasn't it? And gets him to admit it right. with the acting thing. And those, the, those interrogation room scenes are hilarious. Somehow. Yes. I love those. those I, are, I mean, I just, I don't care about the mystery. I just want to get to the interrogation room. Scenes. Well, it's always, they always get someone in there because of her intuition and her intuition is because of the brain. Right. So when she goes in there, it is the brain talking to the person. Yep. So there's always something. Yeah. It's never as live. It's always as the persona that she's right, adopted. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So in that last scene there, uh, it was the method actor right. talking to the prop master. So it was that dramatic, you know, putting the glasses on scene and, you know, and I love that when she came out to talk to Clive, he put on sunglasses to talk to her. It was great. I loved it. Um, Okay. So Band-Aid. It was a cute scene when he gives, when uh, Major gives, uh, what's his name? The guy who runs. Vaughn. Vaughn. Vaughn, yeah. He gives Vaughn the uh, Fitbit. Yeah. The fitness band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, for a reason. Yeah, for a reason. I assumed it, it was a reason, but he says, does this mean we're growing steady? And Major says, he said yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was very cute. Yeah, it was kind of funny to see him actually cracking a joke. Yeah, it was. But it, it, there was a very good reason for that because now he's got Vaughn bugged. Right. And we don't I, find that out to the end of the episode. Right. But I'm assuming that's how he knew that that was a trick. Well, yeah, well we don't know because he, he, they never revealed it unless he, I mean, he, 
talk to Gilda about it later when we mm-hmm. find out that Va- um, Major's overhearing the conversation. Right. right. But we didn't, there wasn't a scene, at least not, you know, shown in the episode. It may be a deleted, but uh, there was no scene of where Major figured it out. Right. So maybe, so I would like to think that he didn't know at that point because it makes him more dramatic because he's kind of rolling the dice by yeah. not by not saving this scientist that gets thrown into a room full of zombies. Mm-hmm. So locked in there. We'll go back and kind of skim this, but yeah, we're kind uh, of going backwards on this, right? So the scientist that's working with Vaughn comes to Major and says, "I've got to out this guy because I can't live with myself anymore." Here's a zip drive with all the information on it. I said zip drive. Thumb drive. How old am I? Yeah. Uh, yeah, thumb drive. Oh, okay, Grandma. Yeah, thank you. It's only like eight years old. I know. Technology. Yeah, I know. So um, he gives him a, a thumb drive. And he says, you have to hold on to this in case something happens to me. You have to go and out him. And instead of doing that, he goes to Vaughn and he says, look, the scientist was going to share this with the press, but I'm going to give it to you. And, and, you know, unsaid. He's trying to put up that I'm trying to protect the company. Right, right. And you can trust me. Right. And earlier on, someone had called him and said that he needed to go down to Tacoma or whatever. And he explains that they have this lab in Tacoma. Um, So after he gives this thumb drive to Vaughn, he says, well, let me take you down to Tacoma. (laughs) And it's, of course, the sub-basement, which is where all the zombies were. And we've seen it before where he has... Yeah, yeah, we have. And at least it has a name now, so we can call it Tacoma. Right. So he takes him down there, and they're about to feed these zombies. And uh, it's not the freshest brain ever, as he says. So he's not getting it from Blaine. Nope. Uh, and because Blaine's brains are farm fresh. No. That's right. They certain well, they are. I'm because assuming they were farmed from people just fresh. yesterday. Right. Well, and he keeps them in coolers and yeah, all that. And nice Tupperware. He's got a really good operation going. Blaine does. Yep. Uh, okay. So he he's feeding these, and they are really really bad looking zombies. They are like. Walking Dead, Chambly. Yeah, they're zombies. deteriorated. Right. Yes. And I'm assuming he's experimenting on them and doing things. That's why he has scientists there. And I think he's yeah. I think he's studying um, the rate of deterioration and trying to get as much data as he can from you know these what I like to call free range zombies. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Except they're not free at all. Well, but yeah, but you know yeah. what I mean. I know, I know exactly what you mean. They're they're in their um, all natural state, <laughs> right? Caged yet free range zombies. Yes. 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 Um. Yeah, just allowed to be. Mm-hmm. They're they're not maintained. Right. It, they're not getting okay. a fresh supply of brain, so they're not coherent like live right. is. Right. They would just be out in the wild zombies right. normally. Okay, so uh He's getting hunted down by Rick and Daryl, but yeah. <laughs> exactly. So he would uh he would put the scientist in there and uh let the scientist feed them and do whatever he needs to do and then he would of course let the scientist back in. But this time he is letting the scientist sweat it out in front of Major. And he's he's you know doing that thing where he's faking out I, I can't hear you. I I'm sorry, I can what what? The doors yeah. won't what? The doors won't open? <laughs> he's he's being a total douche about this. Right. A big time douche. And, and the guy and the scientist guy's freaking out. Right. He's like, dude, open the door. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dumbass. Open the freaking door. <laughs> right. And just at the last minute, he opens the door and let, lets him in. And it's of course it was a test. Mm-hmm. He says uh, to major that this was a test. I wanted to see if you were going to bring me this drive. Mm-hmm. As a, so, loyal, a loyalty test. Past test. Yep. And see, this is what makes me think that he 
could hear him setting this up, but I'd like to think he didn't. I like to think he didn't either because it makes him more, I don't know, risky. Savvy, risky. Yeah, yeah. you know, just he's gambling. Right. About let, not letting this guy. He's kind of weighing the odds. Right. Whether to go in with the scientist or not. Although the scientist is not as smart as Vaughn. You right. can tell already he's not. So, uh, yeah. I, I like to think that maybe um, Major, after he got the thumb, thumb drive from the scientist, he's probably questioning it. Why would this guy give this to me all of a sudden? Right. When I haven't barely talked to him at all. So he's probably like, hmm, suspicion. Yeah, maybe I should. Yeah, maybe I'll just let this one play out, see how it goes. Right. I mean, what's, what's the worst that's going to happen? They get rid of a scientist guy right? for the evil organization that I'm working for? Yeah. Right. Plus, there's this whole uh, thing that he has where he thinks he's doing things his way anyway. You know, he's already not killing these people right. already. So he's got his own plan. He's a loner daddy, a rebel. Right. So, <laughs> so he, you just got the reference, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> he's he's uh, he's showing us that he's already got his own thing happening, and also with the Fitbit bug, mm -hmm. that's a plan of his as well. Right. So he doesn't need this drive anyway. No. So he might as well give it back to Vaughn and. See show if, his loyalty. See if, exactly. See, he gets more out of it by turning the drive over than he does by keeping it. Right. Okay, so the last thing, of course, is time keeps on ticking back into the zombie. And we find out in this episode that Hope 2 has... New, new Hope. New Hope. The New Hope. Get it? <laughs> I do, I get it. Star Wars, There's right. so yeah. Star Wars, yeah. Yep. Um, a New Hope. She has turned back into a zombie, and that means that uh, Blaine and and Major will most likely revert back into zombies. Oh. And so they tell Major, and at the same time, Major and Liv tell Ravi that they broke up. <laughs> well, we're, well, because, because Ravi, Ravi, Ravi's like, hey, you guys can have sex now. Right, exactly. And, Li and Liv's is like, uh, we broke up. Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, so he's like, oh, well, that's his awkward then. Ooh, uh, gotta go, bye. Right. And then they go tell Blaine, and, and you know, Blaine is is not nearly as upset by it, but what? he's not thrilled. Blaine had a cool, like, zombie, when he became a zombie, Blaine started really living ironically mm -hmm. so he's probably but really would be okay his, with being a zombie. his life is essentially going to be the same yeah so it, he's just never going to die as long as well he, i think i think he, he may, maybe he would like the immortality again sure why not uh, i think he was kind of put out with the fact that he <laughs> got we, we never got never got an explanation about why if blaine wants that immortality why, why, does, why let, does it let somebody bite him or scratch him? Yeah. And become a zombie again unless he, unless he has an immunity, but they never explained. That no, he maybe he just feels like he's cured and there's that desire to stay human anyway. Well, yeah, because he wants to be able to taste things. Yeah, sure. And you know, so there's there's lots of benefits to being human, I'm sure. So, you know, staying human, yeah, let's do that. Right. I don't have to worry about going rabid if I don't eat a brain once mm -hmm. a week or whatever. Yeah. I may have a leg up here being human, so right. let's try and stay that way. But if he has to revert, he'll make the best of it. Uh, Major's not as thrilled no. with the process of, of becoming a zombie. Can't imagine why. No, me either. So there's that. Um, and of course she's going to be working with Clive again. So Liv is happy. Yes. Uh, anything I missed? Uh, no, I don't think so. Although huh? Gilda is pretty much of the attitude that, uh, Major's totally playing Vaughn. Right. She tells him so. Right. But, uh, right, Vaughn's, but Vaughn's not having it. Uh, now there was the bit, you did miss the, the bit. Person. 
Yeah, you did miss the bit with um, Dale Bazio. Right. So Dale um, has a tracker on the dog, mm-hmm. which lives with Major. Right. So, Major. Yeah. After Major killed a guy. Right. He so took this dog. That. And she also has a drawing, two drawings made by people of uh, someone that is a person of interest. And then she also has phone numbers made by two of the disappeared people, and they all trace back to Blaine. Yeah, she went to she went to go see Blaine, and then uh, question him about the phone numbers, and he's like, "Oh, I have no idea who those guys are." Right. Then she goes and to Clive's desk, and Clive has these sketches on his desk, and mm-hmm. she's piecing it together. Right. So the the uh, the pieces are coming together in a case against yeah. Blaine. And major in the uh, what is it? Um, meet cute case. Yes. Is that, okay. There will be a reckoning. Right. Exactly. So not, that that's that little side case thing. Not, not looking good for major at this point. It's not. It's but going to be a zombie or going to be uh, imprisoned, arrested, or, or both. Or both. Yeah. Can you imagine if he like gets imprisoned? Gets put in the slammer, and then turns back into a zombie, and then not good. <laughs> not good. How many zombies do you think are in the prison system right now? It's a good in question. That world? It's a good question mm-hmm. because we saw like if like when Liv went into the slammer, we saw that you know she had a hard time getting that brain supply. Mm-hmm. So I got to think if a zombie ended up in the prison system. They'd go nuts. They would go nuts and start killing everybody, and everybody would turn into zombies. Right. Very, rather quickly. Right. So. Yeah, it's a ticking time bomb. Yeah. All right. So what do you give this episode? I give this one eight out of ten bugged fitness bands. Nice. I give it seven and a half spontaneous slaps. <laughs> nice. I like that. <laughs> Slap. Um, I think it's ramping up right now. Well, and yeah. It needs to. Yeah, yes, it did need to. But yeah, we are getting the the mythos aspect is moving forward. Right. The threads are starting to tie together and it's making me much more interested in the show. Um, it, it's not as good as last year. No. But I think it's tying together a little bit more and it may ramp up to the... I, I think it's because time. this is a longer season. Yeah. So they're and drawing it out longer. It out. Yeah. But they really should be plotting more. Mm-hmm. To a, instead of slowing down the pacing, they should be keep the same pacing as season one, but just add more plot, more stuff in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> they shouldn't have so don't, the same story as last season. Don't and be skipping stressing. on the plot just because you got more episodes there, I Zombie. Slacker, right, slacker. It's a gift to have more episodes. It's yeah. not yeah. a detriment. Yeah. Watch the Flash if you don't get it. That's right. Okay, so Jessica Jones, 11, 12, and 13. Yes. We'll start, of course, with 11, um, a.k.a. I've got the blues. Mm-hmm. So here's the A story, B story, C story. A story, bring out your dead. Bring out your dead. Blung. Bring out your dead. I'm not dead. You'll soon be dead in a moment. And then, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling better. And then I, could, the I could go for a walk. No, you can't get back down. I'm not fooling anyone. <laughs> the B story is one pill, two pill, red pill, blue pill. Mm-hmm. And the C story is little orphan Jesse smash. Nice. So uh, bring out your dead. It's kind of their uh, trip to the morgues. Their morgue. Morgues everywhere. Morgue, morgue everywhere. And sadly, Liv was not at any of these morgues. No. How great would that have been? I know. It would have been wonderful, right? Let's just cross over into iZombie just for the hell of it. <laughs> so they're looking for Kilgrave's father, right? Right. Yeah, Albert. Right. Now, they don't find Albert, but they do find someone else. Yes, they do. They find the police captain. Burnt to a crisp. He's a little extra crispy. <laughs> That's right. Who, ordered, so who ordered the extra crispy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they assume it was Kilgrave that did it. But it wasn't. No, it was not. And throughout this uh, morgue hopping thing, mm. she and and um, 
Trish have some conversations. She tells Trish that she's going to go home, but of course she doesn't. Right. Um, <laughs> the, there's lots of more bribing going on. Yeah, because they're basically trying to find follow this trail. Right. And then Jessica ends up like in a cab later. Right. Because she can't let it go. And she goes to a place that apparently used to be a morgue, but it's now a bar. Yeah, club yeah. Or what, bar or club, whatever. Right. Yeah. She kind of sits outside and she has some weird dream and she sees a man in a purple jacket. And who that, would wear every, purple? She, yeah, well, Prince. Maybe it was Prince. The like, Joker. Yeah, or the Joker. Good point. Right. So, I yeah, mean, but... but uh, yeah, she, fun- she thinks, thinks it's the- Kilgrave, follows him out into the street. Mm-hmm. And then- Stops right in the middle of the street. And then... And breaks Bam- the guy's fan. Bammo. Right. And of course, all the people are worried about her. But when she finally does get up and starts to walk away, the guy's like, who's going to pay for my van? <laughs> Which I thought was funny. Yeah, well, that's typical New York, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Who cares about you? Who's going to be totally self-absorbed? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, So she goes home and Trish comes over and they saran wrap her because I'm assuming she has holding holding her ribs together with saran wrap. Right. And she's got a horrible bruise. Right. It's gross. And Trish is is, uh, bitching her out because she continued on, even though she said she was going to go home and sleep. And, uh, it turned out that that guy with the purple jacket was just a guy in a purple jacket. Yep. And yep. It's, be- it's because she just hadn't had enough sleep and she was working on empty. And Yep. And so it's like, girlfriend, you need to sit down and get some Z's. Sleep. That's yes. right. But what does she do? Keeps on going. Yep. That's right. It's not so good. Nope. Um, and throughout this this episode, we also get flashbacks. Some important ones, I thought. That's right. To little orphan Jessie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we get to see how she came to live with Trish and her mom. Right. And back when, she, Tri- back when Trish was Patsy. That's right. So she, we, show, we are shown her waking up in the hospital after the accident. Mm-hmm. Now, how did she... How did she come to live with them? Was she already a friend of Trish's? No, they, they actually explained this in this episode that uh, Trish was there um, with her mother because somehow um, Trish had had a mishap involving fire and alcohol at a nightclub. Right. And so lovely, oh, lovely she- Trish's mom, stage mom Supreme, uh, Decides she gets she finds out about recently orphaned Jessica and is like, hmm, eh, this might like divert everybody's attention away from the fact that Patsy was at a club getting right causing so fires. Her daughter's doing something bad, and then she yeah. goes. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> yes, yes, I adopt an orphan. <laughs> yes, adopting an orphan, brilliant. Right. So. You know, like, hey, hey, it works for Brad Pitt and uh, Angelina Jolie. Come on. Right. So, uh, but yeah. And uh, Trish is not thrilled about it in the beginning. No, but then, but then she finds an ally. Right. And uh, they show also some scenes of her and her mother not getting along so well. Yeah, a bit. To say the least. Uh-huh. Um, some, some abuse. Some Seri- real- serious domestic abuse going on. Serious mommy dearest behavior yeah. happening. Bruising, yeah. yeah. Cutting. Cutting, yes. Yeah, horrible things. Stabbing. Jess- Jessica's yes. not happy about it. And if you've ever seen a People's Choice Award, it's made out of glass with a very sharp tip at the end. So she stabs her with that. Um, Jessica's not thrilled when she hears that happening, and she breaks her brush, which... Right can be written off as you know well maybe it was cracked or whatever yeah yeah exactly uh and then she is standing right next to a really thick marble sink Mm -hmm. (laughs) really thick marble sink and she slams her hand down on it and it breaks in half and that is when she realizes something is different about her yep and trish 
happens to see find out about this. Yeah, she comes in because she's running away from her mom. Right. And she's uh, like, holy crap, the- you broke the sink. <laughs> yeah, she comes in just as Jessica is lowering it to the ground. And she pulls this figure out of her butt, a 150-pound sink. How, yeah. how does she come up with that figure? Yeah, she doesn't say gazillion or... Apparently Trish is like, you know, the uh, rain man of, of bathroom sinks. Right. 150 pounds. Yeah, yeah. 150 pounds. 150 pounds of sink. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. If you were that age, wouldn't that's, you say like a gazillion pounds, pounds or a thousand pounds? I mean, wouldn't you like over-exaggerate? Who knows? Right. But you wouldn't say 150 pounds, which I thought was amusing. Like, I'll know it all. Like, oh, yeah, by the way, that's a 150-pound sink you just right. uh, broke there. <laughs> I think I'd go, why are you raising that a gazillion-pound sink over your head? Yeah. If I, was, I mean, even now I would do that. Yeah. Not just when I'm 15 years old. Now, but. to, now, to uh, Patsy's credit, because she's still Patsy at this point, um, she could rat Jessica out. Sure. But she doesn't. No, because Jessica talks to her about her mom abusing her, so the, and they kind of have a bonding moment together there. And, 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 she, and Trish promises to keep her power secret, Jessica's power secret, and it's kind of a, yeah, you're right, it is a bonding moment between them. And Jessica kind of... That's probably where the moment the where they become that, sisters. Right, alludes to the fact that, you know, hey, let's not let her do this to you anymore. And uh, that's really when they have their first kind of sisterly moment, I think. Because before it, it doesn't seem like before she walks into that room, they're getting along, friends even. Yeah. yeah. So they were like sisters in name only. Right. And then, it, yeah. But now, now have, it's like they've kind of, you know, they both like, have a secret. And they want to survive Trish, mm-hmm. Patsy's mom. Right. And if Patsy learned about this, she would exploit it. Definitely. She'd be all over the TV. The strong girl, you know. Yes. Yeah, exactly. She'd be like, you know, well, we got to turn this into a huge thing. Right. Yeah. Exactly right. So. So, yeah. Uh, so they have their little bonding moment and we we're see- seeing this and this continues all the way through to the end of the series. Mm-hmm. Um, because at the very end of the series, something is said that kind of goes back to this moment. Right. So this this theme picks up here, and it yeah. doesn't end until the very very end of the series. Yeah, when I was watching this for the first time, this episode, I was like, "Well, why didn't they give us this information sooner mm-hmm. in the series?" And then, as you pointed out, it kind of flows into the final episode. Right. So. It's that's probably why they pushed it back. Right. It's a thread mm-hmm. that they didn't want to leave hanging. But too at the long. time, you know, without seeing episodes sure. 12 and 13, I'm like, why did they do that? Now, right. after seeing the final episode, I go, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. They didn't want to leave it hanging out there too long. I, they wanted you to keep it in your head. Um, so there, there's that little thing. And of course, Simpson is coming back around and they're quite wary of him at this point. Yeah. Nuke is, Nuke is not doing great. No, he is looking for Jessica and he puts on a face for Trish and he says, I'm just, uh, I want to apologize to her. Yep. So, uh, where can I find her? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Cause he's stuck st- while well, he's stalking Trish. Yeah. He shows up at a radio show. Uh, he's like, oh, you know, let me, let me explain why I attacked you and went crazy. Right, right. It was all the drugs, but you don't have to worry. Cause I'm done with those. I'm, I'm okay now. I'm cool. Yeah. We're all Every- fine here now. Thank you. How are you? Right. I, I just want to apologize to then her. She shows, and then he shows up again in her apartment. Right. And I love how she says, what is going on with my doorman? Because that's like a theme also through the last couple episodes is well, her to, doorman. Well, to be fair, yeah, like you would think she would tell the door, but Will is probably able to get past the doorman. He yeah, probably, but her mother, her mother shows up too. And that's a pretty, yeah, pretty crappy door, uh, building security there. Right. right. She says the same imagine, thing to her mother. Can't, can't imagine why she lives behind an armed fortress. Right. <laughs> I'd be like, I would do. I think I would move to a better building. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um. If they do a second season, which I'm assuming they will, 
I hope Trish has moved in with Jessica to like a fortress compound <laughs> thing. Meanwhile, at the fortress compound. <laughs> exactly. So, but um, yeah, we got Doctor Kozlov's men showing up. Yeah, in the hallway there, and uh, he shows his true colors Will when they. Does. Will does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they are saying they got to take him back mm -hmm. uh, because he's the super soldier thing, and uh, he he says nope, and uh, he shoots him right there in front of Trish. And then I'm gonna shoot ya. Right, and he takes Trish. Mm -hmm. Does isn't this when he takes Trish? And yeah, he, yeah, he locks her up. And then he right. calls Jessica with Trish's phone. Right. And he's all jacked up on the red pills at this right. point. He takes two of them right in front of her. Yeah. And then right. and then Jessica shows up. Mm-hmm. And then... Go to Jessica's place. Isn't that where all this happens in Jessica's place? Yes. Yes. They He takes Trish over to Jessica's place. Right. They hold up there. He right. calls Jessica. He calls Jessica from Trish's phone, and they have this all-out brawl at Jessica's place. Pretty brutal. <laughs> Very brutal. And uh, this is when they break her door again with the door. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Je door. <laughs> Jessica's door breaks in this episode again. Again. Um, so this big fight happens, and um, now is this? Is this the fight where Trish takes the pills too? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, that's how it gets resolved is Trish ends up taking one of uh, Will's red pills. Red pills, and which are the adrenaline. Yeah. The, yeah. They're really jack up. Yeah. Right. So, um, and she becomes strong enough to take out Will. Right. And but, then she's, she's like, is this how you feel? I am all hopped up. And then all of a sudden too much adrenaline and the blue pills have been tossed out the window. Don't. So they have to go to the hospital. Well, she starts having like, yeah, her because otherwise, yeah, her her brain will tell her lungs to stop breathing. Stop breathing, right? So yeah, they call an ambulance. The paramedic gets Trish breathing normally. Yep. He does that. Uh, it's like an anti-stimulant thing yeah, to yeah. slow everything down. And of course, they do it dramatically because it's yeah. like, oh, you think Trish is dead? Oh, <gasps> she can't. Yeah, of course. The very last minute. <laughs> exactly. Oh, and then now you've done it to yourself. Yeah, exa exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, just at the last minute, and then that's resolved. Um, it's all good. Right. And then uh, Malcolm shows up at Jessica's place, and mm -hmm. again with the door thing, um, he's ready to leave. He's He's going to leave because everything's bad for him. Um, he's got his bag packed, ready to go, and he sees that sad, sad violin music. Yeah, for Malcolm. Um, he sees that Jessica's door is broken yet again, and through the open hole in the door, he can hear that there are some guys in there uh, moving about, and so I guess that's why he decides to stay because there's some hinkiness happening in Jessica's apartment, and then. Isn't that where we end for that episode? Well, we um, there's this unknown number texting Jessica. Mm -hmm. Oh, about, yeah. About running into her boyfriend. Boyfriend, right. Yeah, which... Uh, and that's where we end. So then Jessica's like, oh, crap, Luke. Right. And she takes off for Luke's bar, and then the bar explodes. Oh, does it explode at the end of yes, this episode? Yes, okay. that's her clip. Luke comes out, and he's on fire. He's on fire, but he's otherwise okay. Sure. Well, we know he's okay. Because he's got unbreakable skin. Yes. And that's where we end. Okay. Got it. I'm unbreakable. Yeah. I watched all three together. Yeah, so no, they kind, of blur, they kind of blur. Right? They kind of blur together because they lead into each other. Okay. okay so, so this one. What did you give this one? I gave this one eight out of eight and a half out of ten wrecked marble sinks. And you should be glad I didn't pick that because I almost did. That's why um, I posted mine. First. Yeah. I gave it eight People's Choice Awards. Oh. <laughs> and now on to 112, yep. a.k.a. take a bloody number, yep. <laughs> which is what he says. Yes. By the way, I see what you did there with your rating. Oh, yeah? I find it humorous. Just, just a little bit. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, so A story is everybody's working for the weekend. <laughs> Everybody's working for yeah. the I like to use song titles in mine. I noticed. That's okay. I like that. I like it. Um, B story, Kilgrave and Luke practice their acts. A-C-T-S, acts. Mm-hmm. Um, C story, Trish's mom has got files going on. That's also a song title. Trish's mom has got it going on. Oh, okay. I got it. I was, I was trying <laughs> to figure out. What, instead of Tracy's mom. Yeah. Right. I got exactly. It. But her, it's the files in yes. this case. Um, and it's IGH, which I would also like to talk about a little bit. That deserves a discussion. Yes. Yes, it does. Because there's lots of discussion going on on the internets about this. On the way, interwebs. There are, there are two theories, and I prefer one over the other. It's probably going to be the other theory, though. Do you think? Uh, unless okay. they tell us something else. I would oh. like to think it's going to be a company. I would too. I'm hoping it's a company. Me too. We'll find so that. We'll find that. the same mind. Let's talk about that right up front. IGH has yeah. paid for Jessica's hospital bills. Yeah. And that's what uh, her mother has brought her an envelope uh, that says IGH and that they have paid for all her bills. And she hints that there are many other things she might have at her house if Trish wants to come, quote unquote, home to look for them. Season two set up. Right. <laughs> no, duh. Yeah. And um, there are two theories. One of them is inhuman growth hormone, which I don't like because IGH is a company mm-hmm. to me. Plus, inhuman growth hormone is kind of a new thing, right? I mean, well, in, the, humans- well, in, the, in the comics, they, had, they came up with the, Brian Bendis, who created Jessica Jones, co-created came up with this concept called MGH, which is a mutant growth hormone. Right. He came up with this, I think it was in Moon Knight, he introduced this. No, either that or, no, in the Alias comic, Mm -hmm. um, where um, supposedly the guys were harvesting a mutant, you know, mutant DNA or whatever, and creating this drug for the kids. Right. So that they would get superpowers as part of this drug. For a little right. while, temporarily. Right. And it was like a well, hot new drug. The the thing that makes me want to say that's not it is they already have a substance for inhumans. To make inhumans, right? Well, yeah, the Terrigen Mist. Right. But but that's not, everybody doesn't have access to that. I, I know. So we're going to, and we don't have access to mutants because Fox has them. Right. Right. So it was part of our little because we were stupid enough and gave Fox the mute rights to X Men. Right. We can't use mutants, so right. therefore we have to. That's why we're introducing the Inhumans as the replacement mutants. Right. Because we can't say mutants. So instead of mutant growth hormone, we're going to get Inhuman growth hormone. Okay. However, they have also called these people gifted on this show. Right. Gifted, and I believe. And I'm hoping this is true, that it is more likely IGH equals Institute for Gifted Humans. Mm -hmm. Do you not? This is what you want it to be, too, right? Well, I was thinking something like it would be International Group Holdings or something. Okay. And it would maybe tie back to the Kingpin. Okay. That would be cool, too. And we'd we'd be setting up the Defenders. We're, we're both thinking along the same lines, though, that we want yeah. that IGH to right. be the actual company. We don't, we don't want it to be inhuman growth hormone. Right. But, because but, it's silly for but, that to be... But it seems more likely that it's going to be inhuman. Everyone hormone. seems to think that. And I don't know why because they would jump to that conclusion. Because of mutant growth hormone being introduced in Alias. Yeah, I know. But it's a company name. That's the thing that gets me. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. I'm just hoping it is a company name. I it, am too. It would be silly for IGH to be the name of a substance when they, quote unquote, paid for her. I want to know how Trisha's mom has all these access to these files. Right? It's like, was she sleeping with some dude or what? Well, yeah. How does she, she get a hold of this stuff? If they paid for it, they would keep all the receipts, I'm assuming. She <laughs> wouldn't have it, right? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, unless she bribed someone to get the paperwork as well. Right. 
Which wouldn't be pa- – I wouldn't put that past No, I, w- I would put blackmail. Pa- pa- sure. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Why not know who did all the stuff to this girl she's adopting? Yep. Because they could have experimented on her. Or it could have been their truck that caused the accident. Well, well, well they, they, they made a comment that um, IGH you know, paid for Jessica's hospital bills. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking it was IGH's truck. Right. That's what I thought, too. Yeah. yeah. It so, caused the accident, and it also had the whatever the... So in her dealings, when she was adopting um, and dealing with the medical bills, I'm presuming that's how Trisha's mom got involved with IGH. Right. That they not only paid for everything, but there was also some sort of settlement. Right. From the accident. Mm-hmm. Trish, Trish's mom kept all that too. What's her name? Robin. Trish's mom. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think it, no. Robin is the neighbor, the annoying neighbor we all have. Oh, okay. Okay. But yeah, I, th- I think it's. I think Trish, who used to be Patsy, was named right. after her mother Patricia. Oh, okay. So because Patricia, having the ego, probably named her daughter after herself. It's gross. I'm guessing. All right. So there's that. Um, now, everybody's working for the weekend. In, and I say that because... Especially Loverboy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey, that's good. Thank that's you. Nice. Thank you. Hold on. Where's my... I have a new soundboard, so... <laughs> All right. Everybody's working for the weekend is pretty much that everybody is working all the time because Kilgrave is having everyone work until they die, fall down, complete their task. Especially his father. Right. Uh, And that means they don't take a break to go to the bathroom. They don't sleep. They don't be gross because what are they going to do with their pants? And they do. Yeah. But (laughs) you would think Uh, you would be grossed out by that. Be like, no, go pee outside. Right. But Luke and, and uh, Jessica noticed that, you know, every place is just horrible and the labs are terrible. Uh, He has taken chemicals and uh, they go to a, an apartment that his father has rented and he, they have left behind some equipment and some chemicals and they trace it to another lab. Now we find out though why he's doing this. Yes. He wants to make his range much bigger and his effect much stronger. Right. He's trying to increase his powers. Um, but uh, Kilgrave's father tells him, oh, I can do that incrementally, but not exponentially. Right. So, but he, and right. then, then he's but like begging, begging, sub- begging for sleep and right. Grave won't let him. Right. And he, uh, he tells his dad, I'm not going to let you here. Here's a blender. Yep. <laughs> Put your hand in there. Come and, on. And closer. There's that tension of. Closer. <laughs> okay. Now will you work for me? <laughs> well, it's like, now you want to take a nap? <laughs> right. Exactly. And he says, no. No, I'll work. I'm awake. I'm awake. No, really. (laughs) Exactly. So uh, as they go from place to place, Jessica and... and, um... Luke. Thank you, Luke. They go from place to place. And this is, of course, after he has gotten up from blowing up the bar, which we find out is a directive from Kilgrave. Blow up the bar and do it in front of Jessica. Right. Um, was a directive from him. So basically, but, we find out he's been he was controlled by Kilgrave. Right. Was ha ha. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of important. Right. Uh, so they're going from place to place tracking this down, and he seems to be seems to be in control of his actions. No, you forgot something though. What? Because Luke went through this whole big explanation of that he forgives Jessica for Reva's death. Sure. And, hey, uh, no, I know what it's I, like now that yeah, I've controlled. been controlled. Yeah. So, and then that's when Jessica tells him that she's immune to mm-hmm. kill to the Grave. control. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, she's like, I figured it out because that's when Reva. Um, Reva is the thing that made me 
break out of it and figure it out of it yeah right. figure it get it, maybe strong enough to break the control yes right. yeah yeah uh so they they go on this wild goose chase and they follow a guy from this lab into central park and she tells luke to stay behind because kilgrave might be in the park so luke is waiting outside um and i think that's important right um she follows the guy into the park the guy drops off whatever package he's dropping off and then kills himself with pruning shears oh. right through the face. And I think when she leaves Luke outside, that Kilgrave is out there freshening up his hold. Well, I don't think so because... No? No, because uh, they, go to this, they eventually go to this nightclub. Right. And, and he has, Kilgrave, this, Kilgrave's this, over there. He's testing out his powers. Right. There was already a story that he made everyone do stuff in this yeah. club. So, and is this after his dad has tested some of the stuff on him? Yes. Okay. Is yes. this after he gave him all the stuff? Uh, let's see. I've got it right here. Um, no. That's, that's fi okay. the final episode. So he was just testing some of it. Yeah. He goes to this club and he's kind of feeling he's, out. He's been taking some treatments. Okay. Yeah. He's feeling out how far his powers go at this point. Okay, good. So he's going to this bar and he's doing like a, a mass hypnotism act mm -hmm. on people. And they they go in and they act like they're from the food and drug administration or whatever and they're they're gonna bust him for right. serving underage minors and he takes them up he he gives them a bribe and they stay they say they still need to see the video from that night it's all been erased of Sur course because he's, he's told the guy erase everything and while they're there Kilgrave shows up and starts doing an act haha -ha, on the stage uh, and this he, is, he takes the stage. Yeah. Which is funny. He starts doing like a guitar riff and an air <laughs> guitar riff and all this other stuff. She goes down to confront him, uh, literally leaps down from the balcony <laughs> to confront him. It was a cool move. It was an she, awesome, cool she's, move. He's all badass. Like, right. <clears throat> uh, little does she know, while she's talking to him, Luke takes his sweet time coming down and proves that he has been under... Kilgrave's control this whole time. Yeah, Kilgrave tells her like, "Oh, guess what? I can control people for twenty-four hours now. Yeah, without re-exposure. So that means oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So he have to meet with him outside. Okay, right. That's where I was going with that. Okay, so he's been controlling Luke all this time, and uh, they he can he tells Luke all this stuff. That, uh, you know, Luke has not forgiven her, that they get into this huge fight. And even though he doesn't know about Luke's yeah. skin and all this stuff, um, he has them fight. Mm -hmm. And um, in order to preserve herself, she ends up shooting Luke um, under the chin. Yes, right? with a shotgun. Shotgun. And that's where we end that episode. I know that for a fact. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. And we leave them with, well, and it's like a. a and it was after, after this real, like, you know. A huge like, fight. Yeah, because she doesn't want to do it. But then right. he's like, do what you got to do, baby. Right. And it's like a found footage ending where the camera's like on its side and you hear yep. sirens and you don't really see much. It, it was kind of a cool ending. Yep. Um, and I feel and like it, the you, end of the Blair Witch Project, but yeah, kind of, <laughs> it is kind of. Uh, so is, I think that was an homage to. <laughs> I well, it's an homage to any found yeah, footage thing, right. uh, and and you're just like, what? But yeah. you know, he's not dead because nothing right. can pierce his skin. But still, it's you're, you're it's like, what? Well, 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 he doesn't seem to be o totally okay. Right, he's not okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's where we end. So what is your grade for this one? Uh, I give this one 9 out of 10 very handy blenders. Handy. handy. How handy were they? Get it? 
yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Um, and I give it nine open mic nights. Very nice. Mm-hmm. So well, we you know, were... David Tennant loves to take the stage. I know he does. It was so <laughs> he's great. A, he's a stage actor. He is. Actor. Acting. Acting. <laughs> and then on to Jessica Jones, 13, a.k.a. Smile. The, the season, season finale. finale. Yeah. This is a finale. I can say the F word here because Ooh. F word finale. Because it actually is. I hate got, that word. You got my hopes up for a minute. Mm-mm. I I don't use that word on this Hopefully podcast. Hopefully season finale, not series finale. No, I'm guessing not. This had better ratings than Daredevil, so. Mm, and Daredevil got season two. Yeah, I mean, this will be the season two. I would be surprised if it doesn't. Okay, so here's my topics. Claire's Met instead of Kismet. I see what you did there. Get it? Purple Haze all in my brain. Mm-hmm. Again. Yep. A song, and this also, this one's also a song, Boys on the Docks. I'm not familiar with that one. You should know that. By the Dropkick Murphys. Ooh. It's punk rock. I know. It's on Do or Die. I don't think I've heard that one. Okay. Well. I've, I only, I've only heard some, like, I only have like a couple of Dropkick Murphys on. I should okay. Have that. I should have that, but I don't. It's from 1997. Okay. Maybe that was one of the albums I don't have. All right. Okay. So that's the song too. That's Boys, cool. that's cool. I'll, 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 it's a good song. I trust you. I trust All right. You. Okay. So uh, Claire's met, yes. which is where we get the inevitable crossover to Daredevil, Special which is cool. guest star Rosario Dawson. Right, which I loved. Um, so now we have that uh, synergy between Daredevil, Luke Cage, and Jessica Jones it's all coming together. The shared Marvel universe. That's right. So one- apparently, so apparently, Claire Temple is going to be the like Phil Coulson of <laughs> yeah. Netflix shows. She's going to go around to all the Netflix shows. Well, and rightly so. Whenever as, anyone's hurt, as night nurse, yeah, you can go around and <laughs> patch them up, and you and, know they're going to get hurt. Yeah, because right. now like she can go, and she was on Jessica. She's like, oh, by the way, I know this guy. Right. Well, she said that. I know is, she does. She does. I can reach out, you know. So now she can go like to Luke Cage's show and go like, "Oh, I know these couple." Be- oh, like, oh wait, I met you before because <laughs> I patched you up. That's and right. Then she goes to Iron Fist and be like, "Oh yeah, I, I, I patched up these guys." So you can. I stuck a needle in your eye once. You might not remember me. <laughs> yeah, you were kind of out of it at the time. <laughs> so Claire's met here is. Uh... They're taking uh, Luke to the hospital, and oddly enough, they are telling Jessica how they how she saved his life by calling nine one one right away. <laughs> Whoops! Yep. Uh, yeah, and he's got a blunt head trauma, so we find out that the bullet didn't penetrate his head, but he does have a a blunt force trauma wound on his head from the bullet. I'm assuming. Yeah, there's all this fluid on the inside. Right. He's got, like, liquid on his brain. So he has a CFL, but it's in his brain. That's a cerebral cerebral fluid. That's easy for you to say. Cerebral? Cerebral fluid leak. Now, the hospital people, the ER people, are freaking out because Because they they, they keep trying to get a needle in his arm, and it bends, of course. Right, breaks. and and then like the doctors are giving the the uh, nurses crap because they can't get the needle in. Right, come on, let's get out of here. You're 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 you're, like, off, this, you're off this floor. Right. Yeah, and then the doctor tries to bore a hole in his head to relieve the pressure, and the doesn't <laughs> and quite work. It's, she's like, <laughs> it doesn't work. The steam coming off, yep. <laughs> breaking the bit. Mm, it made my lips vibrate. And, and she's like, oh, he's he's one of those. <laughs> and she, yeah. I, I, I have to get a consult. And she walks away. And then, uh, thank you for my acting. Thank yeah. you. Acting. <laughs> I'm giving right. myself a hand. Yeah. So she, she runs away. And Jessica doesn't know what to do. But Claire stays there. Mm-hmm. And Jessica says, well, there's police coming in. I got to get him out of here. And 
So she she says to Claire, okay, I got to get him out of here. I know it's weird. Mm. You've never seen anything like this, but I got to take him. And she lifts him up <laughs> like right he's there. a plank and puts him in the thing. And Claire says, you know what? This is nothing new to me. <laughs> this, is, this is not my first radio. <laughs> no, exactly. So she enlists her help um, kind of unwillingly, but Claire gets it. Well, yeah, she kind of like, yeah, nudges her reluctantly. But right. She does it. But Claire yeah. is saying, well, where else is she going to go yeah. where someone's going to understand? So, so I she guess. She gives her like her, um, one of her alias investigation card, business cards, mm -hmm. so she can take Luke out of there. Right. When she gets a call at one of the desks. Right. Um, because. And so, like, Kilgrave three, three is, guesses who's on the phone and the first two don't count. Right. Kilgrave has made it there to the hospital. He's watching on the monitor. Because, of course, he is. Right. Yep. So he calls and uh, Jessica tells Claire to take him to her office apartment slash everything. Yeah. So Claire does that. Her demolished uh, apartment. <laughs> yeah. And it is. It is a wreck. Yep. Um. So... He is tormenting her over the phone. She forwards the phone quickly to her cell, leaves the phone off the hook, and she walks away. away. Uh, so he doesn't know where she is, and he is panicking, trying to find her. And he goes over the loudspeaker in a move that is actually brilliant. Mm -hmm. And we realize his reach is more, again, more than than it was before right says to the whole hospital that she is patient zero and needs to be killed yes whole hospitals so, out together yeah yeah exactly so and uh she's panicking by this point she's like everybody's trying to get her so she like ducks into like somewhere she gets on a, a hospital gown or scrubs yeah right. thank you scrubs and a cap mask, and a mask, and a mask. Yeah, and she's like trying to walk along with her. Yeah, we got to get this Jessica Jones person, <laughs> right? But someone realizes that she is rips actually her, rips, rips, rips her max mask off, right? And they end up um, cutting her leg quite badly, actually, mm -hmm. and she manages to get out. Yeah, just barely, but she manages to get out, and she makes it back to her apartment. Um, now, back at meanwhile, meanwhile, back at Jessica's <laughs> crappy apartment. <laughs> No. Back back at Jessica's crappy apartment, um, Luke has started having a seizure because of all the liquid on his brain. It it just keeps building up and building up. The pressure is bad. And his brain is not expanding. I mean, his head is not expanding. So how do you so, do this with a guy with invulnerable, unbreakable skin? Right. Mm -hmm. so, uh, just as Jessica gets there, Claire is on top of him trying to hold him down. And she's like, what the happening hey, here hey right. Now. Right. so she is uh straddling him and she says look get in here and hold his head and she explains to jessica what she's gonna do she's gonna stick a needle in his eye and pull out some fluid and jessica yeah, into the corner of his eye <laughs> right not into so, his eyeball well, the sure. corner of his eye still i know okay. It's gross. I can't yeah, it, yeah, it's 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 not for the squeamish. Let's just put it that no. way, because they show it going in there. And you are talking to someone who has had issues with her eye. Right. I went blind in my eye last year. So this is like trauma for you. Well, not just that, but I've had a lot of things poked near my eye. Mm -hmm. This is worse. I'm sure just it is. thinking about this is <laughs> worse. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. So they have a little scene where Jessica is very squeamish. And Claire says, if you puke, this is over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like big, ba big badass Jessica can't handle a needle. <laughs> well, it's pretty close. She is yeah. really freaking out. Yeah. So Claire um, Claire actually does this, pulls a bunch of fluid out. And Luke calms down. And it looks like he's going to survive. So uh, they leave him there to recover in the bed and he's sleeping it off i guess but he's not seizing anymore which is good they go back out to her living room and she's ready to go back out again she takes what like a 20 second break and uh claire notices the cut and she says take off your pants 
I love I love yes. this too because of the innuendo. I usually like to be romanced more. First. Right, right. <laughs> and she says, right. <laughs> Claire says, right. Uh, but she takes off her pants, and you know they're they're talking as she's putting the butterfly bandages on her leg. And uh, this is when she reveals that she knows a guy that has abilities. Daredevil. Yeah. Cough. Daredevil cough. <laughs> Daredevil. <laughs> right. And she offers to call Daredevil and see if she could help. And they talk about Kilgrave, that he, that he can um, mind control people. But Jessica doesn't. Take but, her up on yeah. It. Right. Jessica says, no, I, I don't need another body on my hands right she she says no i don't you know i don't want to get someone else in trouble which is noble of her uh but thanks again, but, thanks but he's got his own show it's cool right and i think a lot of that is the trauma from watching luke be mind controlled as well she doesn't want another person right in that again and it also speaks to how much she trusts trish in this episode because she enlists Trish's help. Right. I do, uh, I do feel a little robbed though, because as a, because the purple man, Kilgrave mm -hmm. is, is a daredevil villain. Yeah. Well, so it would have been great to at least for an episode happen. to have daredevil meet the purple. Yeah, man. sure. Sure. But it, sadly, that's not going to happen. Although he could have met daredevil before this. Hmm, a lost scene, perhaps. Right. Ooh. I mean, he was alive before this show. Right. Technically, previously. Yeah. <laughs> previously on. Previously uh, on Daredevil. Right. That's my go-to now. I love that sound effect. It is great, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So, they're talking about it. They they have a nice heart-to-heart. -heart, and this is a nice connection that they make, Claire and, and Jessica. So, they're, I think... They're bonding... Yeah, it's nice that Claire appeared on the show mm -hmm. uh, because I do think she's going to be the link between all these shows. And it's uh, it's really a good choice. She's the Netflix Coulson. Yes. I think it's good because she is the logical choice to bind right. all these shows together. Well, you know, she doesn't, like, dominate right. with, with her appearance. She's just like, I'm in, I patch up some characters, I'm out. You know, mm -hmm. like, I deliver some exposition and I'm out. Right. And she does, it's not a character that junks up anything. Right. It's a natural. It, it, it's, it's, it moves the story forward. Exactly. And it's not another superhero that needs to be worked in. Right. So from here, um, we go to a plan that Jessica has set into motion. And it looks like Jessica has decided to meet up with. Kilgrave, who has uh, texted her again to meet her at a certain place. Okay. And this is where Jessica goes to where his apartment or whatever and sees Let's see. his dad. Yeah, basically. Like, Matt. Well, they track him down. They like he's this. He's got holed up in some place. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's like he's uh, blaming his dad for not being able to control Jessica. Yeah, but Jessica finds his dad. Yeah. Find his dad, Matt. Well, before that, Did though. Matt? Yes. No arms, no legs on the floor. Yeah, yeah, Matt. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. It's not good. And all the other people are yeah. all like, yeah. dead and body parts scattered everywhere. It's pretty gross. But we we did, we did missed the part where Kilgrave takes the serum. Oh, right. His dad has yeah. the serum. And he yeah, asks yeah. him, yeah. what's going to happen? Yeah, because he, well, he, he talks Yeah, he talks about, like... Um, He's like, he, he, I guess Kilgrave's mad at his dad because he can't control Jessica. So he's like, okay, I'm going to take all the serum. Right. And, and, then, and, then, and then he's yeah. like, maybe then I could have control of Jessica again and reject her like the way she pushed me away. Right. Way. <laughs> and, and it's important because when he first meets, there's a flashback to when he first meets Luke outside of the bar where Hope killed herself. Yeah. Um, he tells Luke to get in the car and they have a little chat and he's already mind controlling Luke to get the correct answers out of him. And 
Luke reveals that they have this connection, that he and Jessica have a connection and that they were lovers. Yeah, and then Kilgrave gets all pissed that, well, you <laughs> hope you didn't, like, like bollocks her up for me or whatever. Right. Did you bugger my chances? Yeah, and bugger my chances, no, yeah. No, you did that yourself. And he gets real, and he goes, well, that's an answer I wasn't expecting to hear or something like that. And that's when he decides, you know, well, my chances are nil now. I have to mind control her right. or I'm never getting her back. And so he decides to tell his father that he wants to take the entire vial of serum. He's like, screw it. I'm dr- I'm thinking the whole thing. <laughs> right. Because nothing else has worked. Um, he's, he's done it incrementally and Jessica still has not succumbed to his powers. Right. So his father says, well, it's like 40% it'll work. And 60% it'll kill you. And I like, he asks his dad, which one do you hope? And his dad says, I hope it'll kill you. And then he pats his father on the face and he goes, oh, I hope the same. <laughs> and what he's saying is, I hope it kills you. Right. Uh, so, yeah. he And he takes the serum, all of it. Yeah. And now, now he do, like, he starts vaguely turning purple. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He's... So, but but sadly, and I'm disappointed he didn't stay purple. I know, me too. Because how great would it have been? To like, oh, he's purple at last. Just a, a bit of a tinge would have yeah, been. Yeah, like, it's something. Yeah, <sighs> but not so much. He just kind of turns purple, and then he looks normal. Robbed. Robbed. Yeah. I agree. So, um, he takes this whole vial, and he leaves behind him epic grossness. In his wake yes. is everybody's decimated in his place, and was he back in that bar mm. where he had open mic night or whatever, or is he already on the docks where the booze cruise is? Uh, well, he heads. Yeah, he's gone. Uh, he leaves, and then that's what um, Jessica and Trish. It, well, Jessica sends Trish, but where does Trish meet with him? Is it in the bar? I think it's in the bar. And then yeah. Jessica meets with them on the dock. Right. He tells Jessica to meet them on the dock. So she sends Trish in her place, but she's got big earphones on. Yeah. They're... And then big Trish... headphones that not can not at all be knocked off her head. But she runs. Yeah. Right. And Jessica's like waiting for them somewhere else. And they end up at the docks. I'm just going to do that. Let's say that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it is. They end up at the docks. Yes. And there, there's all these people from a booze cruise there. And there's construction workers and other stuff. And he starts to control everybody except for Trish and Jessica. However, Jessica fakes it. Mm-hmm. Which I think is awesome. Right. And he thinks that she's faking it at first. Well, after so, yeah, after he like makes he's like, okay, I'm gonna make Trish my sex slave. Right. So he's testing her. Yeah, and he's yeah, he's just basically saying, he's well, he wants to punish Jessica for one, but then right. he also wants to test her loyal or if she's succumbing to his power. Right. Because she would just stand there and do nothing. Yeah, she would. He 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 figures well, she would go after me and try to kill me. From right. This. So he's like making Trish kiss him. Like he's right. like mean it. And right. Just to torture Jessica. And Jessica's just standing there. Yeah. So he figures, well, I guess you really are under my control, aren't you? Right. So he lets Trish go. Yeah. And he tells. He gets Jessica in close. He gets right. in close to Jessica by this right. point. Right. And he says, tell me you love me. And as she is. Well, standing- first he says, smile. Right. Like, give me a nice, pretty smile. As an AKA smile. Yeah. For the right. And then he says, tell me you love me. And Trish is standing behind him. And right. this is where it kind of comes around to that. Yeah. That they bonded thing. And Early. she looks she over. Lo- she looks over to the side. Yeah. And says, I love you to Trish. Right. And then she grabs him and breaks his neck. Well, she squeezes him by the throat and he turns purple for a little bit. Yeah. From from error. From the air loss. Yeah. yeah. So and then she Which twists. Like, and the purple yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So a little ironic thing happened. And everybody's magically freed from his skin. Yeah, and they're all like, what just happened? Which I thought was weird. They were all like, what? Where am I? And 
Can you feel the brand new day? Can you <laughs> right? feel the brand new I kind day? of expected them to start singing Thriller or something. <laughs> they were all like in a formation. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so all that's left now is for them to be back at Jessica's apartment. Uh, well, first, Jessica gets arrested. Right, for killing him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, uh, she, yeah, she gets arrested, but Jerry, who actually finally steps oh up to the plate. Yeah, Jerry Hargar steps up to the plate finally. Yeah. After, and after seen... 12 episodes of being horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Which she, gets, she is, just terrible. But she gets Jessica freed because she's like, look, okay, you, I'm sure you've like, you know, she tells the, the cops and the DA or whatever. She's like, okay, that booze cruise, I'm sure you've tested everybody's blood. You know they weren't drunk. And mm -hmm. they've got tons of witnesses that will say that, you know, just so happens that, oh, yeah, Jessica was used by Kilgrave to commit suicide. Mm hmm Right. And, uh, exactly. and, so and the DA's like, that's your explanation? Like, <laughs> suicide? <laughs> it's like... Well, I can make it happen. <laughs> right. So you better let her go. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, damn it's it. Pretty and much and I've got plenty of cops that, what? you know, took shots at my client. Right. So they're like, crap. <laughs> you don't have a case and you're just going to be humiliated in yeah, court. So yeah. Yeah. You better just drop it. So, yeah. And they, they end up dropping it. It's yeah, not. Trish is outside the jail and gives her a big hug. And Jessica, she starts to do the, like, she's like, the twelfth doctor. She's like, I'm not big on hugging, and then, oh, and then I guess hugged. I guess I'll hug you now. Right, right. Aww. Well, she did say I love you to her. Yeah, so yeah she did. So. That. And that was a direct I love you right. to Trish. By the way, was yeah. So and he realized. I love that Kilgrave realizes right at the last minute that he was being played. Yep. And he realizes that's it. He's gone. I loved that look too. He was, oh no. This is it. I've I've done it to myself. Oh bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh now okay, you're gonna so, have to help me. Yeah, here. well basically okay, so yeah, Trish gets some she starts Trish starts we see Trish looking through folders of IGH setting right. up more season two. Right. Is she back home with her mom looking through all this stuff? No, I think she's at her place. Okay, so she's at least she got, picked it up. Because her mom dropped off the folders at the hospital. Okay. And then, so I'm sure, I'm presuming Trish brought them back to her place, and she's looking through them at her place. Okay, so set up for season and then, two. And then Malcolm has found a new job as Jessica's assistant. Yeah, yeah. so Jessica's at home. Everything's a wreck. Um, she starts getting calls, and she's rejecting them. And it's, you know, she feels like everyone is going to, she, her life is over. It's a solitary wasteland for her. Um, people start calling her and saying, hey, are you that chick that did this or that was on the news? Yeah. I need to help me with this. And then she starts getting some genuine pleas for like, you know, my boyfriend is threatening me or whatever. And people right. are calling her for help. I need your help. She starts first at, at first deleting the messages. Right. She keeps rejecting them. And then. And, and Malcolm is like. I know what's better for her. Let me, I'm going to intercept. Mm -hmm. So he starts taking he, the call, he takes the phone away and he starts He's like alias start. investigations. How can I help you? And this is when the camera pulls out. And what do we see? We see everything through that broken window in her door. Right. Again, with the broken window and the door. Yep. Every episode, there's a picture of something going on <laughs> around the door. Right. Every episode. And I really want to know what it means. But that, but that was just, that was just the theme. It's just yeah. a theme. It doesn't have to mean anything. Yeah. But I mean, it, theme, theme around doors. There were, there were themes about like openness and closing people out. Yeah. So this and one, the, well, here and with this one, this last shot where we pull back, mm -hmm. um, it's through an open window. Mm -hmm. So we kind of see that Jessica's opening up to the outside. Mm, okay. We pull back to the outside. Right. If you want to go the, the, you know, the, the full Simplism. metaphor, the symbolism. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So that's my, so that's my a bit answer. of vulnerability there. Right. Yeah. But now she's exposed. I just, I think it's very interesting that they use that doorway like that. Mm -hmm. 
So until season two, hopefully sooner than December. Yeah, better be. Or November, whenever it was. Yeah. And hopefully we'll get to know what IGH stands for. And it really, it better not just be the, the serum because that's lame. That's really lame. Okay, so what do you give it? Uh, I give this one 9 out of 10 needles to the eyeball because ew. Yeah, right? I give it 9 epic fake outs. Nice. Because Jessica fakes him out epically. Yep. You're the best around. Yeah, that's that should have been like uh, uh, Kilgrave's fail music right there. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Snap. <laughs> yeah. Right as he slumps to Snap. the ground. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so those were amazing. So, uh, all in all. Uh, I do have to ask you one thing about Simpson. Okay. When he was in the episode yeah. talking to Trish, he repeated words. Like? He would say, yes, yes. Or, um, let's go to Jessica, Jessica. He did that several times in the episode. Go back and watch it. Okay. Um, but he, it was notable. I mean. It, you think it was maybe could, Liz, like. Talking to someone? I don't know what why he did maybe, it. Maybe he had someone in his earpiece or whatever. It was an effect. Yeah, I don't know. But he would repeat words. Maybe it's just showing how crazy he was. It, maybe. I don't know what it was, but it, I found it interesting. He would he would say something like, "Trish, I gotta find Jessica, Jessica." Um, and uh, uh, what are we doing? Uh, we've got to go after her. After her. Hmm. It, it was weird that he would repeat stuff like that. Okay. Whole well, sentence fragments or, or I just, words. I, just, I would just chalk it up to like his mental crazy. In instability. Okay. Or how the I just, drugs I are affecting him or something. Like maybe the, how the drugs are affecting his brain. Okay. I don't know. That's what I would go with. But I noticed it in that episode. The first time he did it, I noticed it. And I was like, oh, that's weird. I wonder what that's about. And then he did it like four or five times more. Hmm. And I, I thought, well, that's an odd choice. I wonder what that means. So, uh, if so, anyone knows, yeah, let us know. So, overall, how would you? Uh, what's your take on the season as a whole? Fantastic. You liked it? Yeah. I overall, even though I gave some of them less than this, I'd probably give it almost a ten, just because it was so great. Yeah, it's it's it is good. I mean, it does like I like I think I said this earlier. It kind of dips in the middle. Mm -hmm. of the season but overall but but it does come back strong yeah i would rewatch it yeah yeah it's good i might sit down and binge that's this is definitely a binging show yeah and because i watched it in little bits and pieces and i would right. love to watch it without the breaks yeah now because you started off doing a, the one episode per week for the mm -hmm. show and then but as we and I got to watch as, it. as we were trying to catch up, you know, right. or like get everything done before the the big tidal wave of right. show, right. Was the tsunami. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, I preferred the chunks. I'm sure you did. I'll tell you that right now. Especially uh, the final three. Watching these three in the in a row was great because I was like, I need more, I need more. Especially when Luke got shot, I was like, so, what? Next we have Daredevil season two. Yeah. With the yeah. Punisher. I can't wait. Who's John Bernthal. Yeah, John Bernthal from The Walking Dead. That's right. He's apparently getting his own Punisher spinoff show. And uh, he's been getting rave reviews. Yeah. He, yeah. He so, really uh, like him. Yeah. So they're going to go ahead. They haven't announced it officially yet, but the, the, the buzz is that the Punisher is getting his own Netflix show, which is awesome. I'm assuming he will. Yeah. It, it really sounds like it. It'd be great. Yeah. So uh, those are our four shows, and we do have feedback from Justina. Okay. So let me cue that up, and I shall play it. Please do. Clicky, clicky. Yeah, sorry. Hi, Karen and Charles. I hope you're both having a super week, and I am so excited because next week a whole lot more superhero TV comes on. At the time of this recording, January 16th, we are currently at five more days to Legends of Tomorrow. I'm so excited. <laughs> I, give this I think she's excited. I yeah. zombie. Eight out of ten beer cans of an ancient civilization. <laughs> My biggest question 
how many episodes before we see the zombie virus come back for mm-hmm. Major and Blake? Not because many. I'm pretty sure we're going to see that virus come back. Sweeps month, February. February. I do think that Liv and Major both being zombies might make their relationship more successful. And Liv is doing good stuff with solving crimes with her zombieism. So I wonder if she will take a cure when it is available. And I did have to deduct a few points from this episode because all this talk of the cure got me thinking about another one of my favorite CW shows, which is The Vampire Diaries, which spent a whole season finding a cure and then another season deciding who is going to take the cure, which in that show is a cure for vampirism. But still, I really hope we don't spend two years on this. And Jessica Jones was absolutely amazing. I'm Mm -hmm. giving an overall grade to the whole series as 9 out of 10 reluctant superheroes. Mm -hmm. And I've been keeping my eyes out for door references ever since you guys have been talking about it. (laughs) And in the final couple of episodes, the window in Jessica's door was broken again, which I think could be seen as a sign of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And in this case, in the end, in order to defeat Kilgrave, Jessica had to become completely vulnerable to Kilgrave to get close enough to him to ultimately defeat him. Talk to you guys next week. I can't wait for CW's comic book superhero premieres. Felicity simply must live, or I will be <laughs> unconsolable next week. Have die, a Felicity, die! <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Charles. Mostly. No, she should live. She should live, but be uh, completely paralyzed. Hey, so you're wanting her to be Oracle? Is that what you're saying? No, I mean completely paralyzed. <laughs> She's like, an, I hooked, a, ho- hooked up to an iron lung. <laughs> Charles! I'm ashamed of you. Thanks, Justina. Nice feedback. I agree. She's not going to be Oracle, by the way. Yeah. I, she better not be. That's lame. Um, I agree. Although I think she just, obviously, she was just pretending to be vulnerable. But yeah, I agree that that was the deal. And uh, the vulnerability, as you and I were talking about, was more with her uh, opening herself up to the real world at the end. So very good. Obs- A lot of symbolism. In this, in this, a series. lot of, yeah, with the doors. Yep. Aren't you glad I pointed that out to you? I am. I am. I appreciated that much more in my second viewing. Yeah. That you mentioned it. So with yeah. all the doors. Yeah. It was definitely something they did on purpose because otherwise it wouldn't be there. So. <laughs> yeah, if, glaring. Yeah. If you notice it, it's in your face. If you don't, then. It's, it's there's fun. there's that subtext. Yeah. But it's not overwhelming, so that right. if you didn't pick on, on it, you don't care about it. Right. Yeah. But if you're set to look for the doors, then I, boom, it, there yeah, it is. Yeah, it's like door, 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 drinking game. You can right. make a total drinking game out of those doors. You would be drunk. Pretty much. Definitely. So uh, where can people get back to us if they want to send in their feedback? Well, uh, they can get back to us at, at Fandom Zone Cast on the Twitter Mm-hmm. Or we have our lovely The Fandom Zone podcast Facebook page, that which is correct. just hit sixty likes. We could, use, we could use more for, for sure, for sure. Um, so we've got that. So just or, look up Fandom Zone podcast. Fandom on... Zone podcast on Facebook, on the Facebooks. Mm-hmm. And uh, Karen, where can they find you? At Alaveria, A L E V E R I A, on Twitter machines. And there is an About Me link in my bio that you can follow to find all my other linkies. And, by the way, if you are following my reading, I have read 20 books out awesome. of 200. One and tenth, one tenth done. That's right. On the 16th of 10%. January, I have read 20 books. So 20. Uh, 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 uh. I am crazy weird. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Well, I wish I could find the time to do that. And several of them were super long, by the way. They're not just tiny books. Not, not just the little, like, thin paperbacks or whatever. Yeah. Only one of them was part of a serial. Okay. One. Not, not just comic books, either. Not oh, comic no. Books. No, they're okay. quite long. Okay. One of them was, like, 700 pages. Ooh. So, 
You're getting all Tolstoy on us. No, most of them are around the, the three or four hundred page mark. But impressive, most Thank impressive. You. Thank you. Um, so for me, you can find me at Charles Skaggs on the Twitter machine. Mm-hmm. And please, please, by and, the way, and please do because I'm four short of four hundred. <gasps> so I'd like to get over that four hundred mark. Okay. Soon, soon please. Um, just for the sake of it. Um, and then, of course, on at Charles Skaggs on the Instagrams. And, of course, my Facebook page, Charles Skaggs. And uh, my the Google Plus for all you crazy kids on the Google Plus. <laughs> and? and? And my blog of Geeky Things, Damn Good Coffee and Hot, <laughs> where I talk a lot about DC, DC and Marvel comic book TV shows and the comic book movies. And the Fandom Zone podcast and lots of other stuff. Mm-hmm. So many, many stuffs. Please check it out. Please do. Uh, but we really want you to come to our Facebook page because there's great stuff on there. Um, I usually put promo material up in there. We have lots of articles about casting news. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Link, links for the officially official Fandom Zone podcast t shirt. That's right, which I still need to get one of. Yes, you do. Uh, yeah, I really do. <laughs> and uh, Santa didn't bring me one, oh, even though awesome. he kind of promised me. But <laughs> oh, uh, oh, now I feel bad. No, it's okay. I Don't feel worry. bad now. I'll get myself one. Um, I didn't know your size. It's okay. I'll get myself. I I I was planning on getting myself one anyway. Okay. And now I will. Now I feel horrible. No, don't. I do. That's just the only reason I didn't get one, but I'll get myself one now. Um, And I am going to promote at Charles Skaggs on the Twitter machine, but please let's push him over there, please. Not over Uh, the cliff, preferably. No, over the 400 mark. Uh, We need to get him some more followers because he is very interesting on the Twitter machine. He's Mm. everywhere. No, you put your links to your damn good coffee and hot on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, yeah, you should do that. Um, I, however, am very eclectic on the Twitter machine. I, <laughs> I live tweet a lot of stuff. Yes. Especially a lot of comic book shows. See, I don't do that. So if you like but, live tweeting on the comic book shows, uh, follow me. I'm very plus three and plus seven. That is, I'm very not live. So I tweet weird things like, uh, women who take pictures of men's things with costumes on. That's what I tweeted this morning. See, that's interesting to me. I would... <laughs> Is it? Well, you should go on my time. There you go. There you go. But, yeah, it's it's it's, great. it's it's not I dull. Put the NSFW tag on it, by the way. Okay. Some people are like, "What is that?" I said, "Hello." It says NSFW. Don't click on it if you don't want to. <laughs> but whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, go uh, to those links. Yeah, and then next week we're going to be. Back in the thick of things as, oh, man. as the DC comic book shows return. I'm so excited. Legends so, of Tomorrow. We get the premiere of Legends of Tomorrow. We get the return of Supergirl. Mm-hmm. Well, at least for another week. until Unless they take another hiatus. But we get, of course, the Flash and right. Arrow back. That's right. So, yeah. yeah and so we're uh, and the through. two-hour premiere of Agent Carter. That's right. Not that just one, is- two hours. Right. So no agents season. have healed for a while. We're no. going to get Agent Carter in the meantime. Yeah, Agent Carter for about nine weeks. Right. And then but Agents of Shield. Will be back. Oh, um, Arrow, The Flash, I Zombies back again. I said no I Zombie next week. Oh, I Zombie. No, no I Zombie for the next two weeks, not until oh. February second, because I don't know why. Because we don't know why. We don't know why. Maybe they want to save episodes for February sweeps. Whatever. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get this on off week thing. I don't get it. I don't get like airing in one episode one week and then taking a hiatus. And then no episode. Yeah, Supergirl did it too. No, Supergirl I think is back for a stretch. I hope so. I think we're okay. And we're gonna get uh the Toy Man Yeah this week. So Yeah, Wynn's father. That's right. And also Adam, which is uh quite the coincidence, which I don't think is a real coincidence. Mm -hmm. If Think something you know bad might happen there, maybe. I don't know. He's going to be a love interest for Kara, so we'll see how that goes. All right. 
I think that about does it. That's it for us. We shall see you next week. And uh, bye. Bye, everyone.